dream come true and now I'm doing fangirling of um, Anthony Burnside. Okay, the, snap, got the, snap, uh, the bodyguard, first scene of the movie was so stupid. <laughs> Maybe they looked over and saw oh, no, the yeah. earth things aren't worth it. <laughs> These earth things aren't worth it. We are in for a treat. We are talking to uh, bodyguard to the stars, Anthony Burnside. He is uh, really a protection specialist. And we're really going to uh, find out, is there more to a bodyguard? When is a bodyguard not really a bodyguard? Anthony, welcome. Welcome, thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Show. You're not scary at all. No, I try not. <laughs> I try to be lovable. I try to be lovable. You're lovable and huggable. Yeah, thank mate, you. Look at this. Oh, this is like, I love hugs. That's like bear hug to the max. That's like high octane. Exactly. Um, we're just going to do this a little bit because we can't really see your face. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, there we are. <clears throat> The first thing that struck me when I saw you wasn't that I think you're big and big and clearly bodyguard material. Mm -hmm. It's just that you've got a very um, lovely, warm, engaging spirit. So how can you have you. lovely, warm, engaging spirit? And by the way, smell good. If this was smell vision you'd see that <laughs> he's just uh, smelling up a storm. But in a, in a, good, in a, good, in a good way. way. In a good way. Um, so why is it that that's what you project and yet the line of your work, you've got to be far from warm and engaging right. and... Fluffy. I always say I'm really nice and warm until I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was on the receiving end of that comment, and yeah, you don't want to be sitting mm -hmm. the work that you've done over the years. So you've worked with some pretty high-profile people. Right. Yeah, some people, of course, we can never talk about. Sure. But, but I've worked some of the um, most high-profile shows in the in the world, from the Grammys, the Oscars, the Golden Globes, BET Awards, American Music Awards. Um, and a lot of other private functions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like your own personal secret service at NSA. So it goes beyond just, I guess, that classic cliche, taking the bullet for your client? Mm. You know, there's a, I have a friend uh, in uh, England. Mm -hmm. And over there we're called minders. And uh, we were joking one day and I said, would you take a bullet for a client? He goes, oh no, that's just not British. <laughs> but, 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 but in that answer yeah is 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 it li lies the rub because we plan so well that there's no need to do that we set so many things in place uh, we have the five concentric rings of protection mm -hmm. and we set so many parameters in place that that's almost reduced to the possibility of zero because if <laughs> if you have to take a bullet for your client, then somebody failed <laughs> along the way done in your job. stages, right? Yeah. So let's say I was to hire your services. Mm -hmm. um, would I be so? I'd be pretty easy to protect, I think, because I'm small, mm -hmm. and you're huge. Mm -hmm. Can you just stand up and people can sure. see? <laughs> oh, that was, yeah. Okay. So, so he's not like seven foot, but he's like seven foot this way right. horizontal. So let's let's talk about. It. I'm your new client. <laughs> How would, we go, how would we go about establishing this professional relationship? Uh, the first thing I would do, I would do what we call a pre-client interview. Mm -hmm. Because everything you tell me remains confidential. Mm -hmm. It's in the vault. We don't talk, right? Then um, you would go, um, uh, I would ask you what's the level of threat, that kind of thing, if there's anyone coming after you. And, um, and then we would customize the protection around that. So it's like a tailor-made situation. Mm -hmm. and Everything's tailor-made, everybody's different. Right. And as we always say in the business, dead clients don't pay. <laughs> so- uh, Is that on your business card? I wish it was. <laughs> so when you see a movie, you know, the, the nice, pretty, highly glossed uh, work of Hollywood. So when you see a movie like, like The Bodyguard, like mm -hmm. the famous Whitney Houston, which by the way is one of my favorite movies, that mm. soundtrack is the bomb. It's a great soundtrack. And I just use the word bomb in relation to a bodyguard's interview, maybe not mm. so appropriate. Um, when you see a movie like that, do you do you despair um, for the fact that they're painting uh, a picture that is not entirely accurate? Right. The, the only movie, when it comes to security, the only movie that's accurate is a movie called um, In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood. Right. Because that actually goes through what we do. And, um, uh, 
the bodyguard. First scene of the movie was so stupid because <laughs> you notice he gets in a shootout, right? Right. That doesn't happen because if you get in a shootout with a client, the client uh, will die. Right. Yeah. Not, you don't do that, <laughs> and you don't take him in the same door, take him out the same door, you bring him in. You don't do that. Yeah. So and you don't sleep with your clients. That's another thing. So. So uh, that's so. So a movie like The Bodyguard is less drama and more comedy for people in your field. Yeah, I thought it was a farce. <laughs> a I thought farce. it was a farce. It was like it was great though, because yeah. you know I like when he's on like Kevin Costner. Yeah. But I was like that just wouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like Perk I used to be a cop. There's a really good movie called End of Watch mm -hmm. with Jake Gyllenhaal. So if you ever want to know what it's really like to be a cop, watch that movie. Mm -hmm. So very few times does it, do they get it right, but most of the time it's just, you know, it's not like the transporter. It's not like we're jumping off doing <laughs> super martial art kicks. It's not like that. We don't do that. Right. You know, if we're doing that, that's bad. That's bad for business. You know, yeah. that attracts attention. People get sued. You know, yeah. we're the quiet, we're like James Bond. Uh, but without the suits. Without the suits. We were, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. We're like chameleons, we blend in. So How would um, you blend in? I'm interested. You know? I know it's weird, right? It's weird, <laughs> you got right? This big, you know because badass. Like, I just said badass. Gold go. watch like I come from Compton, which I clearly don't. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, it's Compton you, in Queensland. Is is there a Compton in Queensland? I have no idea. You know, I love magic and I tell you what, I, I love magic and science. I'm a big science nerd. Mm -hmm. I like astronomy. Hey, I tell you a perfect example. Mm -hmm. I've worked for some really cool people. Never impressed me. Like uh, 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 Madonna some years ago, um, Iggy, mm -hmm. uh, and those are people I can mention because it was you know, the Grammys, blah blah blah. Yeah. But do you know who I ever fanned out over? Who did you? Who did Anthony Burnside fan out over? Neil deGrasse Tyson. Really? He's an astronomer. Yes, I know who he is. I'm a huge fan. Matter of fact, I was uh, just... He's a smart, engaging guy. He's amazing. He's, he's incredible. Yeah. I, I met Neil in February at a function. Right. And immediately, I was with my friend Tiffany Rothman. Yeah. And immediately, I went over, I shook his hand. I said, you are my hero. Yeah. And then he goes, the universe is a hero. And I said, damn, he's good. <laughs> From Neil deGrasse, from Richard Dawkins, Andrew Frocknoy, mm -hmm. people like Paul Kurtz. These are my heroes. Paul Kurtz is actually a personal friend. Um, uh, uh, James Randi. James is not really a scientist, but he's a skeptic. He's that's also right. a friend of mine. That's right. Um, that's what I, I mean, I can sit here and we can talk about the first and second law of thermodynamics or string theory or Walden 1 and Walden 2. Hey, talk dirty to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's, it's, it's like, uh, believe it or not, I met a few people that didn't believe we went to the moon. But there are lots of people who still believe that. Right, but they're wrong. They're wrong. You don't buy into that conspiracy? No, I, I use facts and logic to arrive to a conclusion. I don't do... Because <laughs> you're crazy I, like that. Yeah, exactly. I don't do pseudoscience. I do this real moronic thing called uh, thinking. Oh. <laughs> and when you look at the evidence, as an investigator, you look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. You don't start out with an answer and work your way to an evidence. I'm from the uh, 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 Aristotelian logic, the Jeffersonian type of thinking. He's a great guy. Right, yeah. where, where you start out with the evidence and then work your way to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. All of the things they talk about when they talk about the moon landing, it can all be debunked with the new Google search. But one of the things that works very quickly that the, the hoaxers never talk about is that we have a laser that's shooting from uh, an observatory in Texas where it shoots a laser at the moon and it bounces off the reflectors that the astronauts put there. That, that way we can determine the distance of the moon. That's right. how we determine the distance of the moon. Mm -hmm. And I always bring that up because they put it at different locations when the Apollo craft landed, right? And so when I bring that up to hoaxers, they say, well, we just put robots in a ship and send it down. I say, really, then why don't we just do put humans in a ship? Easily dispelled like that. Yeah. And the pseudo-scientific thinking, I think it's great if um, uh, if you're just a regular person and you can espouse these things, that's fine. But when you work in government, where you have certain people in the, in the American government that doesn't believe in science, that doesn't, that's when it's scary. It's a problem. Right. And I stand by Bill Maher. I stand by uh, Neil deGrasse. I stand by Richard Dawkins. Um, you don't want 
that kind of tunnel thinking, that kind of lazy thinking, because that's what it is. It's a, uh, Dawkins uh, coined the word mind virus. And what that is, is that's when you pass useless information to another person, it just becomes even more useless. There's nothing fruitful that but then comes it from spreads, it. Then it spreads though, right? And it spreads. Mm -hmm. I think you have a right to believe whatever you want. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't force it on someone else. Absolutely. You know, if you want, if you want to believe in UFOs, I have no problem with that. Matter of fact, I can intellectually say that I don't think we're alone in the universe. I think maybe there are other That was my next question there. to you then. Mm -hmm. UFOs, fact or fiction? I would say, from what we've seen so far, mm -hmm. there's no scientific evidence. But that doesn't mean it's not true. That doesn't mean that they're not visited. I think Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, said it best. It would be arrogant to Absolutely. assume that yes. there's no other life forms out there. I think there is. Now, notice I didn't say necessarily believe. Because believe gives you the supposition that it could be true. I think that there is. Like, evolution is a fact. Gravity is a fact. The Earth spins around the sun is a fact. Okay. I, I think that there's other life forms out mm. there. Maybe, and maybe they just haven't gone here yet, or maybe they have. Maybe I don't they're know. not interested. Or maybe, maybe they're not interested. Maybe we're the Alabama of the universe. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe they looked over and saw, no, these yeah. earthlings aren't worth it. These Thanks earthlings aren't worth it. Yeah, these earthlings, uh, no, these earthlings are not worth it. Let's go to the Andromeda Galaxy. This is a fanboy of him. Oh, most definitely. Oh, crazy. Did you ask him to sign your yes. shirt or something? No, I asked him to sign it. Right. And I got a picture with him. Right. It's great. Now, and now we talk every now and then. So really? he's kind of, oh, are you kidding me? Would you protect him? Hell yeah, I wouldn't even charge him. <laughs> That's Neil deGrasse Tyson. So you heard it here. There's yeah. a freebie for you, Neil. Exactly. In college, I was in the sciences. I excelled in humanities, philosophy, logic, ethics, biology, microbiology, uh, physics. Those were my areas. Well, you know what, Mr. Burnside, you have certainly, uh, throughout the course of this conversation, uh, you have dispelled the um, misconception Thank you. Thank you. that uh, a bodyguard, and you're not a bodyguard, you're so much more, mm, no. is um, all brawn and nothing up here. So. Right, those are the ones, I tell you a true story. Mm -hmm. Most people, especially on Hollywood, they're like the big, gigantic guys. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that because of the psychological intimidation factor. But if you look at the Secret Service, they're not big guys. No, they're not. They're big women. But they're some of the most highly trained professionals in the world. Because it's we protect you with this. Not necessarily this. If I have to protect you with this, I'm not doing my job. And you're going to get sued and yeah. someone can get hurt. Yeah. But the best weapon a protection specialist have is their brain. This is the most deadly weapon I possess because I'm a chess player and I'm always a few moves ahead. And we are here with the very lovely Anthony Burnside. He is a, um, a protection specialist, not a bodyguard, because there's so much more to what he does than a bodyguard does. And uh, you've got to hear this. He used to be a radio DJ, Velvet Voice. Here we go. I used to work at a station, <clears throat> really KKFI. Yep. I used to work at a station, KKFI. And when I, when I opened the show, I would say, uh, you listen to 90.1 FM KKFI. My name is Anthony the Evil Genius playing some Parliament Funkadelic for you. Doing it to you in your ear hole. We call it oral sex. I want me some of that. Me too. Peace. where they came from. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel and do all that social media stuff that's coming up on the screen.